I'm quickly going to go through some article in the Belgian media about Hamas and what Hamas is really like. So the portrait of a terror uh, movement and the title is Israelis love life and we sacrifice ourselves. So apparently uh, a quote by a Hamas member. So uh, for the US and the EU, Hamas is a terror organization, but for many Palestinians in Gaza, uh, it's a much more credible resistance movement than the lack lackeys of the Palestinian Authority. And again, a quote, I don't think Israel can um, eradicate Hamas in the short term. Uh, we will probably get a movement that ra radicalizes even further. Uh, and then here there's a Hamas expert, uh, Yerun Hunning. He teaches um, polit the politics of the Middle East at the King's College in London, and he's the author of the book Hamas in Politics. <clears throat> and he says that it's almost impossible to really destroy Hamas unless you go for a total genocide. And he says that these uh, Qassam brigades, they have about 40,000 militants. And if we... Uh, if we assume that 10% of the death in Gaza are members of uh, Qassam, you would have to kill 400,000 civilians to kill 40,000 militants. And then there's also the, the political movement of Hamas. So there are also uh, people who, who work in the administration of Gaza. And there's also a Hamas social welfare. Well, Hamas is also a, a social welfare organization. So where do you draw the line? And uh, in polls uh, conducted in the last 15 to 20 years, Hamas always got the support of 30 to 40% of the population. Even even when uh, these military conflicts uh, lead to a lot of fatalities uh, on the Palestinian side, uh, so this uh, Khalil Al Haya, uh, he admitted that uh, the glorious or great act of the seventh of October would elicit. Uh, very heavy reaction on the part of Israel. And the goal of Hamas is not to rule Gaza or to provide it with water and electricity, is what Al Haya says. And this expert, this Hamas expert, Gunning says every time Israel bombed Gaza in the past, the support for Hamas grew. So the way in which Israel wages war with lots of um, civilian casualties uh, makes sure that Palestinians blame Israel and not Hamas. And Hamas sees the sacrifice of lives and martyrdom as necessary for the future Palestinian state. And from our perspective, it's extremely cynical that uh, Hamas decides this um, for, for the civilian population. But you have to see that in the context of uh, an occupation of 56 years and a 16-year uh, blockade, and, and those have, life in, have made ga life in Gaza impossible. Uh, so some member of the political bureau of uh, Hamas, Ali Baraka, said in an interview with Russia Today, um, that the Israelis are known for loving life, but <clears throat> we, in contrast, we sacrifice ourselves. We uh, consider our uh, dead to be martyrs, and what every Palestinian longs for the most is to be a martyr uh, because of Allah while defending his country. 
I seriously doubt every Palestinian wants to die that way. Um, so a little bit about the history of Hamas. I don't want to make this video too long, but I think those facts are well known. Uh, he does say that uh, at the start when Hamas was formed, uh, Israel didn't didn't uh, try to block Hamas. Um, quite the contrary, they they encouraged Hamas uh, in the hope of of weakening the secular nationalism of the PLO. And this is this is what uh, Avi Shlaim uh, writes in Iron Wall. But the Palestinian uh, uprising had a radicalizing effect on Hamas. So eventually they, they formed this military wing. Uh, early on, they, they, they all only targeted Israeli soldiers. Uh, and then uh, the, the founder, Yassin, was, was killed in 2004. And then uh, in 1993, there was the first suicide bomber of Hamas. Uh, he blew himself up in a village uh, on, in the West Bank. And then about a year later, the Jewish extremist Baruch Goldstein, uh, he opened fire on praying Muslims in Hebron. And then hell broke loose for Israel. Um, so Hamas discovered the spectacular effect of this kind of attacks and the on, on the public imagination and embraced it. And that's what uh, Middle East expert Khaled Harup writes in Hamas, a beginner's guide. And there's also resistance against Oslo. So, so the, the biggest irony is that Netanyahu, who was the most outspoken critic of Hamas, um, had the most political gain out of a series of uh, suicide attacks in, in the big cities. Mm. So, so the these attacks had the effect that public opinion um, turned on the peace process with the Palestinians. So, in Israel, I suppose, and then the the mastermind behind this, Mohammed Dave, uh, born in a refugee camp in uh, Gaza in 1965, he is the is the brain behind these uh, attacks of October 7th, and he's so far he's escaped uh, being killed. And then this gunning, this expert says, would be wrong to see Hamas as some kind of monolithic block. There are hardliners and, and also pragmatic uh, people. Uh, and the ones who are pragmatic are to be found in the political uh, leadership. So Hamas won elections early on and they gained a lot of uh, popularity because they have a lot of social uh, programs, uh, schools, sports clubs, mosques, uh, charities, education, healthcare, and help for the poorest. Uh, then eventually they changed their their charter or they gave up on their charter and they came with a manifest uh, where they support the two-state solution uh, according to the borders of uh, 1967 with East Jer Jerusalem as the capital and on the condition that the Palestinian uh, refugees can return. Something, in my opinion, that will always be unacceptable uh, for Israel because then...
the Jews become a minority within Israel, and that's the whole point of Israel to protect the Jews. Or if they want to, they can settle there to be protected. Uh, and they mentioned that, that Hamas and Iran got closer, and uh, that's how they got uh, this, uh, this Qassam brigades got more training, money, and weapons. And then there's October 7th, now or never, they write. Mm. So, but again, uh, there are Hamas members who, who say that Israel has no place being there. We need to remove this country. We need to destroy it. It's a catastrophic. Uh, it's a catastrophe for uh, the Arabic and Islamic nation. We need to end it. Um, this feeling says that Israel thinks it has two or three more weeks of uh, having free reign in Gaza before international pressure becomes too strong. So probably you will get a more radicalized movement and more people wanting to join Hamas. And even, even if you do a weaken Hamas extremely much, uh, so there will be a new movement. Uh, as long as this occupation and the colonial, colonialism uh, continue, uh, so they should negotiate with the, with the pragmatic members of Hamas. Um, and the Palestinian Authority is super unpopular. So the, their, their Fatah is being seen as an agent of Israel to, that, that should keep everybody in line in the West Bank. So for many Palestinians, they, Fatah is not a part of the resistance. And uh, Western governments seem to have learned very little from Iraq. Uh, to completely uh, remove a regime and then replace it by a regime of lackeys doesn't work and certainly not with the Palestinian Authority. So that's it. Please comment, like, subscribe. Uh, it helps a lot.